on? Hello. Yeah, Damian Hi. Calhoun, LA Daily News. Um, you're a couple of days um, past Tuesday's game. What, what are your thoughts now, how that game um, played out there? Yeah, my thoughts aren't too different than right after the match, uh, especially with time to reflect and really look at you know the film and, and also talk as a team. We just feel like we're off to a great start, that we're really pleased with uh, getting the combinations of players together, some experience, which was really good. A win, the five goals, especially our goals from the run of play, lots of things that we'd like to see you know, replicated. And uh, just really ready for taking a next step together. Did everybody come out of that game healthy and be available for Friday? Yeah, I think you probably noticed Olivia took a little knock and she, she sat out of training today, but it's just a little knock and, and she'll be back at it soon. Uh, and Casey, uh, coming into this camp, what, did you ex what do you expect? What do you want to take from this camp? Um, what were your thoughts when you got called in, and how do you want to take this and help you uh, prepare for the upcoming year and season? Yeah, obviously very excited to get the call in, especially with its first ever Gold Cup. And uh, anytime I get to come in and represent USA, uh, it's an honor. And it's just obviously being sure, being ready to you know, come in and play minutes and help the team win, and that's – the biggest thing uh, is my role is just to help the team be its best. And so how I prepare and my standards, I think, will help that. In this, okay, there we go. Uh, Scott French from Soccer America. Um, Twyla, how, how are you approaching this tournament in terms of using your goalkeepers? And, and what role do you see for Casey in uh, tomorrow night's game? Uh, Casey will start in the next game. We, uh, we, we're really proud and very fortunate. We're proud of and very fortunate to have three really great goalkeepers at this camp. They're all working extremely hard, and Casey just alluded to it, just staying ready for any time their name is called upon. Tomorrow, uh, Casey will, will get the nod, and we know that she's really prepared. She's been looking really sharp in training, and uh, it's going to be a great game for her. So I want to get your thoughts on Becky. Um, her getting a chance to come back after missing a World Cup that she says was heartbreaking. Um, what has she added to the group and what ways does she help given the number of young players? In what ways is she an influence in that as well? Well, first I'll just you know touch on her play. She was ready to come in, ready to step into it right away. Uh, these are things that she knows based on the length of her career to expect that changes do happen in camp and she was happy to step in and do a great job for us. I thought she showed uh, great disguise on the ball and patience on the ball, which is important against teams that like to sit back and are really well organized defensively. And then in terms of what she brings to the group, it's just you know constant, just Becky being Becky, which means lending herself and her experience to anybody that needs those things while also making sure she's performing at her very best. I see her spending time with lots of different groups of players, which is really enjoyable to watch you know, in the environment and everybody wants to be around her, which I think is really important. She's spending a lot of time with Lindsay, which is also important. Lindsay's been doing a great job uh, leading the team as our captain and, and it's just been great to have veteran leadership in the squad. And, and the same question for Alex, uh, what, what she's added since she's come in or what she can add as, as this camp and tournament continue. Yeah, again, uh, just another player who was staying ready, came in and was ready to embrace the challenge right away. You know, obviously getting a goal under belt in the first game with limited minutes is great. And she's performing, she participated in the match day plus one training, which was uh, wonderful to see. She's looking very sharp, hungry, and we expect great things from her when her name's called upon. Why, why was she not on the initial roster? And then as a follow-up to that, uh, this is a camp where you've talked about wanting to, to kind of close the experience gap a bit. How much of it's about that and how much is everybody in this camp in the conversation for the Olympics come summer? We're very fortunate to have uh, quite a big player pool that we're confident in. And when it came time to picking the initial roster, the, we went with the players that we felt we're going to help us the most and help us see the combinations of players that we're going to help us most and we're the most ready. But that doesn't mean that there weren't a variety of other players that we could have called in. That's that's one of the hardest things about this job is putting the rosters together. So we simply were taking a look at different players at the time and utilizing different players. And then what was your next question? Yeah, well, next the, the, the time to close the experience gap mm -hmm. the length of the mm -hmm. is the entire roster in the conversation for the Olympics coming up? Or is some 
this about the health care needs of the public? So if I'm understanding the question correctly, everybody who's here and players that are not here are in the mix for the Olympics. So Yes, everybody who's here is in the mix for the Olympics, and we have some players that aren't here who are also in the mix. And uh, in terms of trying to get opportunities to close some of this experience gap, it all starts with the fact that they are talented individuals that have high quality that we think can, can and do play at this level. And that we're, when they get the experience, that that gap, experience gap will close and, uh, and it will be, we'll see even more progress from them. From them. At this time, we're going to move on to the media who has joined us virtually. Joseph, you can go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Joseph DiPolito of The Guardian. This is for both of you. Um, there were a lot of Americans on three rosters in particular, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and El Salvador, and other rosters have had smatterings of Americans here and there. Um, do you notice American players on other national teams rosters helping elevate um, the quality of play on those national teams and in general how would you view uh, the American um, influence on international women's soccer as a whole? Yeah, I'm always aware when there are players that have American citizenship that are representing other countries. Um, I think one of the things that stood out to me yesterday was just what a great system our college system is in terms of developing players. So I saw quite a few players actually in this tournament that have played, whether they're American or not, in our American college system. Uh, opportunity to get education, opportunity to grow in terms of, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Opportunities, opportunities to get education and opportunities to, you know, to play in one of our pathways, which has been really important. And I think that anytime anybody earns the right to represent a national team, that that means that they've gotten there because they're meant to raise the level of that national team. And I think that goes for uh, people that hold dual citizenship and, and people that are there from the beginning. And yeah, I would just say the growth in the women's game is, is so exciting coming back from the World Cup and seeing uh, how many talented players there are around the world and on each national team was just inspiring. So I think it's just a really exciting time to be a part of the women's game and um, yeah, and all the different talented players on all the different national teams. Stephanie, you can go ahead and ask your question at this time. Uh, hi, thanks, Steph Young, The Athletic. Uh, Coach, um, after the last game, Midge Purse talked about how you guys discussed tactically doing exactly what happened out there, wanting quote unquote easy goals like tap in goals, but just from getting the ball in that area, as well as you know Midge's insane service last in that game. But I'm just wondering if you could elaborate more on the discussion you had about not that they were easy goals, but you know wanting tap ins, wanting to be aggressive, wanting to press in those areas and put the ball in that space in front of the net. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple concept. We want to have repeated moments that we can anticipate potentially earlier than the opponent and moments that are harder for the opponent to recognize are coming. And we also know that most goals are scored at the highest levels. For instance, at the World Cup, most goals are scored from within that six yard box area, yard box area. So it just makes the most sense to try and make our repeated and obvious moments to us ones that result in shots that are closest to goal and in an area that statistically gives a better chance for goal scoring. Andrew Jones, you can go ahead and ask your question at this time. Thank you very much. Just first um, for Casey, um, you were traded for Crystal Dunn uh, back in 2020. Um, have you had discussions with her about how that trade happened and how it's led to you coming on the national team with how you perform with, with North Carolina? And Twyla, just your Thoughts on Argentina with how organized they are and, and your thoughts on how you view them as your next opponent for tomorrow. Thank you. So your question is on the trade with Crystal Dunn? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of 
you're a professional athlete, you know you can be traded at any time and um, something you know when you sign up for this job. And so once I found out I was traded, it was just about making the most of the opportunity. Obviously back on the East Coast, I'm from the East Coast, so that was a nice move, um, a little bit closer to my family. But yeah, just being a part of the Courage, um, their culture there has been one where it's one very competitive and two, it's very intense. And those two environments have really helped prepare me to be on the national team because that's exactly what this environment is. Uh, it's very intense, it's very competitive. So uh, yeah, you have to you know take your experiences from club and country. And I feel very you know uh, grateful to be able to learn from both teams and take what I learned from each team and apply it in the different environments. At this time, we'll take one final question from Orlando. We're excited for the challenge to play Argentina. You know, I think you were asking more about what do we know about Argentina, how we feel about playing them. I think, uh, I think they're a talented team with a lot of individually skilled players. I think they combine well together. I think they have a really good mix of experience and they're starting to integrate some younger players as well. And I think from game one against Mexico, we saw you know, just how organized they could be defensively and, and how they can get better as the game goes on. And this is good. It's going to create a challenge and test for us that we're excited and ready for. Orlando, you can go ahead and ask your question at this time. Gracias. Muy buenas tardes para todos. Una pregunta para cada una. Empiezo con, con Casey. Mañana es un partido en el cual si salen con la victoria estarían en la siguiente fase. ¿Cómo jugarle a Argentina eh, el día de mañana? Y si va a ser un partido diferente a lo que tuvieron contra la República Dominicana. Y para la este, técnica, eh, ya mencionó algo sobre Argentina, pero ¿qué hay que cuidar más de este equipo argentino para mañana y no llevarse ustedes una sorpresa eh, en, en un resultado adverso? Gracias. Yeah, we're excited to play Argentina tomorrow. Obviously, we know the results are important, so we're going to make sure we have our game plan in, in place and stick to the game plan. And um, for us, it's, you know, keeping the focus on ourselves and what we need to get done. Um, but, yeah, we're just looking forward to getting out there tomorrow um, to play a very good opponent and to bring our best. And I would say that we, we're really focused on us. Part of having success this tournament is keeping in mind that, we have several players that are coming uh, out of what is preseason, and we're hopeful to get you know the full six games while we're here. So making sure we have changes and rotation in our roster to keep everybody fresh and peaking at the right time is going to be important. We we're working on our tactical flexibility, which I hope is evident. So we will continue to work on those things. So I think the question was how could we prevent surprises from Argentina, but you know there's possibility that we could also do something different. And hopefully that creates uh, questions for them as well. And we're not focused on, you know, preventing something from happen happening. We're focused on making sure that we execute our game plan and dominate in the way that we want to dominate uh, while respecting our opponent. Coach Twyla Kilgore and player Casey Murphy from Team USA, thank you very much. With this, we have come to the end of today's press conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.